things. And that is where the magic happens in your understanding, in raising your awareness. And when this is all converted and you've done some practice and preparation, you'll be on point, ready for a promotion board. And that's the kind of thing why I believe candidates um, and people on my testimonials are asked to remain behind, as some have been done, on a promotion board to actually have a conversation with the board about how they were so good. How did What did you do to prepare? Well, they did this. That's what they did. So this is Metropolitan Bespoke CVF Values. Uh, and as I say, they're slightly differently. They are still presented on the CVF um, graphic like that in the instructions to candidates, but there are some slight differences. So I wanted to have a quick look at the value of um, courage because you know there'll be Metropolitan officers uh, listening to this video and there will be officers from various different forces um, trying to pick up points and insights from it. So again, same process as I've done, doesn't matter what force it is, it doesn't matter what values they are or competencies. I do this for myself. And as I say, you could do this at the top of uh, a piece of A4 before you then start laying out or drafting out your best examples to demonstrate the values or the behaviors. So quote, courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes courage is that quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I'll try again tomorrow by Marianne Radmacher. And that is a quote to me that goes to the heart of a growth mindset. So, you know, people don't always succeed first time at promotion. Many do, but lots and lots of people don't. And it's that courage to come back and try it again. But also how else is courage displayed? How is this value displayed in the workplace on a day-to-day -day basis in policing? So this is something for you to consider. So I've put there for me, if it was me doing this and going through this process, for me, courage is displayed in decision-making because that's hard. You know, it's not always a case of you as a cop operationally, and I'm thinking particularly around things like stop and search, to actually come up with a decision that's right or wrong. There might be two or three different decisions from a scenario that are right or wrong. Which one are you going to choose and why? What's your rationale behind that? And that takes courage. You know, why did you choose to arrest this individual and not this one? Or why did you address two of them and not the other two? Because that's the kind of thing barristers all want to know. And when you demonstrate your accountability and your courage through your decision-making rationale, you'll be able to evidence this kind of stuff. So, you know, when have you last demonstrated courage? <laughs> I give an example of it, what happened. You can make meaning of it and go, actually, now I know that courage is demonstrated through decision-making. I did that the other day. Let me tell you all about it and let me write it down here. So it just helps you make those links. Resilience, being composed, that's what cops have to do. They have to be resilient, particularly with the, you know, the incidents, uh, the priority incidents that they're sent to again and again and again, missing the meal breaks. But resilience physically, resilience mentally, uh, and resilience just to keep going. And that takes composure and, uh, you know, cops are expected not to lose that. Um Learning from mistakes, that's a massive one. Reflection, that links very much to emotional uh, awareness. Do you learn from your mistakes? Give us an example of a, a, a mistake that you've made. What did you learn from it? How will you use this information going forward? These are all potential questions you can raise from this value of courage. And standing up and accountability. Um, you know, having that courage, having as a supervisor, the, the courage to, to kind of create an environment where your team as individuals and collectively can stand up and have a voice and speak out and challenge. That's what courage means. Not just your courage, but giving it and enabling it and empowering it to other people. And to help you do that, because that was just my little box of um, my understanding, you have those descriptors again there with the bold um, text that kind of articulates and helps you refine and distill your own examples. So courage is a, a bespoke value in the Met and it's very helpful. Uh, and in the Met, they actually describe it. They are other descriptors, you know, uh, some of the language. We stand for what's right, remaining resilient under moral and physical pressures, admitting and learning from mistakes and holding others to account if we need to. You know, policing is a complex business. So having a framework, having a decision-making model, these are tools to help you cut through the complexity of policing and to help you deliver your leadership at whatever level that is across the organisation. Courage in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary talks about mental or moral strength 
to venture, to persevere, uh, and to withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. Now that's bang on with policing, isn't it? And the activities that you are expected to do and that your teams will be able to carry out uh, and, and with that mental or moral strength under your supervision. So it is important to do some meaningful reflection on these values and these issues, especially if you aspire to lead others, which is what you're putting yourself forward for. You have to be the role model for these values and these behaviours. And if you can't talk about them when the board asks you questions about them, that's awkward. And that's what this is about. It's just giving you some food for thought uh, to help support your thinking.